Okay, I have a lot of windows open, so if this skips, I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm doing it again. I just did a whole... Oh, it's awful because I had to give up like 15 minutes almost. But it was skipped so bad I couldn't keep it. Anyway, this article is not about NASA or the validity of anything they say, all right? Yes, we know they're holding out on us. Yes, we know they know more than what they're saying. But this is just strictly about the official narrative, and I want to show you on paper... Um, you know what they're saying and I want to show you this article that I just found by accident um, from 2010 a few days ago it's pretty amazing when with how it parallels to today so 2010 passing into the energy cloud Christmas Eve 2009 the startling startling hypothesis that our solar system the Sun and all its planets are moving into a potentially dangerous and destabilizing energy cloud uh, resoundingly was sustained in the research paper, a strong, highly tilted interstellar magnetic field near the solar system published the December 24, 2009 issue of Nature, a highly respected scientific journal. We have discovered a strong magnetic field just outside the solar system. So think about it between 2010 and now, how much has come out about NASA, or excuse me, not NASA, but well, NASA itself, coming out and even admitting that there is a possibility of Planet X after all, or something tugging on our solar system. This energy cloud is at least twice as strong as had been previously predicted, and that solar system has begun to pass into it, adding that this field is turbulent or has a distortion in the solar vicinity. In fact, this is the best part about science. That's why it's so retarded. In fact, most scientists, scientists had either minimized possible significance of the interstellar energy cloud or dismissed the whole notion of itself altogether, of, of its existence altogether. So one day, it can all change. Isn't that amazing? It literally, science literally changes every day. One day it's, oh, it's nonsense. The next day it's like, holy cow, it really can happen. Oh, it's life as we don't know it after all. Like, it's crazy. It makes no sense. The atmospheres of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are in inexplicably excited. Immense storms, mammoth eruptions, plasma, arc jetting, uh, plasma arcs jetting from the planet's surface to their moons. He reasoned that this turbulence is caused by an external injection of energy into the planet's atmospheres, to wit, an interstellar energy cloud, which the leading edge of the solar system has now entered and I've shown I've done videos myself where I've shown you from NASA's own words um, space.com universe today all these other quote-unquote credible space sites their own words they say that the solar system all the planets are heating up now the nature article does not examine the earthly ramifications of moving into the energy cloud beyond suggesting that we could face an increase in cosmic rays which could affect everything from space travel to rainfall now, this is just for me, I'm saying for me, the Higher Truth Channel has done uh, more than enough to show me that there really has been uh, highest UV readings ever recorded, uh, an increase in cosmic rays. Uh, another good one here is the, what, the total gross radiation levels have reached, have reached fatal levels. So there's enough out there for me to substantiate this uh, increase in cosmic rays that are talking about here. Uh, passage into this interstellar cloud has already begun to perturb the sun, causing solar outbursts that are leading to hurricanes, earthquake and earthquakes, and volcanoes of unprecedented ferocity here on Earth. He is on record as predicting that we will face global catastrophe in not tens, but ones of years. And now we have Yellowstone in the news almost every day now about those swarms of earthquakes, even though I guarantee there will be a different volcano that goes off before that one. Concern the potential impacts of solar turbulence on climactic and seismic events on the global satellite network and also the electrical power grid. The National Academy of Sciences concludes that up to 130 million people could find themselves without electricity for months or years due to, due to solar megastorms shorting out the grid. Without telecommunications, water or gasoline, the pumps are electric, refrigerator and basic law enforcement or military security civilization as we know it would be brought to its knees. How many drills have we seen since 2010? How many movies, how many television shows, how many commercials have we seen since 2010 where that exact, thing, exact scenario happens? Here's a recent one from the government itself. I'm sorry if I'm talking real fast and a lot. I got a lot to cover in a short amount of time. U.S. government prepares for space weather event as NASA warns solar minimum is coming. Okay? Um, and then we have here, I think that's pretty much it. I want to also reporting extensively, oh yeah, on evidence that the Earth's protective magnetic shield is showing signs of realignment and deterioration. Um, that's part of also one of the theories of what CERN is doing. 
our, our space neighborhood is changing and not for the better. Uh, they don't know anything about the sun. You know, they're telling us, again, we know they're holding out, but I'm just saying, on paper, they don't know anything. They don't know how this thing works. They don't know anything about it. All right, here is something from the government themselves. Uh, large 14 carbon levels excursion in 5480 BC indicates an abnormal sun in the mid-Holocene. Uh, where is it? Fine, let's see. Measurements found an extraordinarily large carbon-14 increase 20% from 5,481 B.C. to 5,471 B.C. The increase, the carbon-14 increase rate of this event is much larger than that of the normal grand solar minima. The sun freaks out all the time. It has, well, not all the time, but a lot. Well, you know what I mean. Like it's done, it's done it a lot before, apparently. This is not the first time this has happened. That's why... It's all happening the same way all over again. That's why they're preparing for the solar or the solar minimum or the space weather event. That's why they're having executive orders have been signed. Because they know all this stuff is going to happen. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. The sun just freaks out every time it goes into a new age. Or it's going to flash. It's going to burn out. It's going to dim. It's going to explode. It's going to stop. I don't know. Something like that. It's one of those things. And they tell you it's going to. It's just going to not be for billions of years from now. Don't worry about it. And then, like we said, right, science changes day to day. And then all of a sudden tomorrow it's like, wait a minute, uh, that it's doing things that it shouldn't be doing until billions of years from now. Like that's what's going to happen. It's ridiculous. But these guys got to keep you in control, and they got to make a buck, right? So it's all hidden from us, more or less. And here's the best part. you got to love this. 2016, the sun goes blank again during the weakest, uh, weakest solar cycle in more than a century. While a weak solar cycle does suggest strong solar storms will occur less often than during stronger and more active cycles, it does not rule them out entirely. In fact, the famous superstorm known as the Carrington event of 1859 occurred during a weak solar cycle. And that's the big solar flare that even knocked out the telegraph. And here's what's even more interesting than that is you got this FEMA drill called dubbed Earth X that's taking place two days after the solar eclipse called Black Sky also. And it is uh, about a catastrophic event that severely disrupts the power grid, or it simulates an EMP attack. But it's funny, it's called Earth X, and it's two days after the solar eclipse. And when the solar eclipse comes right back around again seven years later, it's going to come from the bottom up and form an X over the United States. This is like a super huge internal event for everybody they're already even saying that animals are going to act crazy well if animals are going to act crazy people are going to act crazy too this is a monumental internal event and they're having every the, the sun's going to change so it's also like predictive programming people everybody's going to get one last good look at the sun because when it comes back seven years from now it ain't going to look the same this thing is just a warning it's 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 a warning of judgment or cleansing even better is a better word of what's what's come of what's to come. This last solar eclipse happened 99 years ago at the end of World War One. And what's amazing, if you didn't know this, is the time before that it happened. Um, the last time there was an eclipse like this that's going to happen in a few days happened in 1776. So this place is going to be born in eclipse and is going to die by an eclipse. In 99, or 99 years ago, in 1918, the eclipse started in the Pacific Ocean and came across the United States. In 1776, just like what's going to happen in a few days, it will only touch the United States. That's it. Here's CBS News. This eclipse is partic particularly rare for its accessibility. The path of most total, total solar eclipses falls over water or unpopulated regions of the planet. This August... The event will go down as the first total solar eclipse whose path of totality stays completely in the United States since 1776. And from stuff that people have told me and other videos that I've seen myself, it's going to happen on the 233rd day of the year. And 233 is the 51st prime number. This was Super Bowl 51 this year, right? Uh, it's going to happen 33 days before the Revelation 12 sign. It's going to come in on Oregon from the 33rd, which is the 33rd uh, state of the union. It's going to leave out of Charleston, which is on the 33rd parallel. I mean, this thing is intense. Like, it's intense.
And then when it comes back, it's going to form this X. And it's just like the communists, man. Top down, bottom up. And the best seat in the house is going to be right there in Carterville, Carbondale area of Illinois, which is where I literally, it's in Carterville. And in fact, Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness, it's what he's called. For the first time, my wife and her family lived down there for decades. The guys never come to Carterville. Ozzy Osbourne is coming to Carterville, Illinois. Look it up. It's called Moonstruck. He's going to come out, and at the exact time of the solar eclipse, he's going to come out and sing Bark at the Moon. Tell me that this isn't a big deal. But the best seat in the house for the longest totality of this thing, the best look you're going to get is in that area. It's called Little Egypt. That's what it's called. That's where I met my wife seven years ago. It's pretty, it's just, it's, it's crazy to me. So, and what makes it even better, right, is where is this take, where is the best seat in the house? Carterville, Car Carbondale, I Illinois area, which is in where? The heartland. And earth is an anagram for heart. So before this place is judged, it's going to experience a total eclipse of the heart. Ain't that right, bright eyes? And then what's even better than that to top it all off, in 2020, Saturn overtakes the skies, uh, the stars apparently, and comes into position, which basically means a total, it's a takeover. That's what Saturn is. It's the, the god of law. It's a takeover, which tells me that it's going to be the one world government will be in place by 2020 or will come into place by 2020. And if you do like, if you type in Saturn 2020 alignment, you'll see that they talk about an entire societal structure and system reset. Just type it in. There's a, there is a specific planetary alignment it's going to cause great societal reset. So I think that whole Barack Obama being the last American president uh, prediction is going to end up being dead on. While Donald Trump did make it, I don't think that guy's going to see the next election day, whether he's assassinated, quote unquote, or not. I don't think he's going to be in office. So really what I think the, the books will say, that Barack Obama was the last American president, comma, to serve a full American presidential term. Thanks to my subscribers. We'll see.